What up, peeps? It's your girl, Dash. Come back to Fernal Takes. Well, it's the time I got his reaction time, and this is the House of the Dragon. This will be for episode three, second of his name. Before we get into that, I just want to do a really quick recap. Now, last uh, week's episode was so good. I just love the way everything's kind of progressing, you know, at a nice little, you know, pace with these characters. Uh, definitely seeing the situation uh, that's going on with Viserys, of course, having to make some, some tough decisions. He is king. Of course, after losing his wife and his son, and being that it's been from the time stamp they're giving at least half of a year, six months, you know, possibly remarrying, you see him, of course, having a discussion with um, Valerian and his wife, Princess uh, Renise, and just saying, let's join our houses together. We'll be, you know, strong together. Definitely an ally to be forced to, someone to be forced to be reckoned with. You know, he won't look like he is kind of vulnerable. You know, even though he's made his daughter, uh, Renera, you know, the new heir, hence the tension and things that had happened and correlated with Damon making such wise choices and words. <laughs> air for a day. Oh, just every time I think about it. Needless to say, uh, seeing also the way Otto Hightower is just, you know, finding his way to slip around all these type of decisions being the hand, you know, first trying to figure out how they're going to deal with, you know, situations within, you know, the realm with the king and then also the situation that happened where his daughter you know kind of giving her dad like you know we can use the dragons to help you know you know valerian in regards to you know the crab feeder and all this other stuff because of course you know all just like you know we'll you know pay you back handsomely it's like i don't want you know i want them to be dealt with i want us to go down there deal with them you know face to face and all that so we can be done you know with the situation and her like well let's you know we have the dragons that you know you can use that that's that's that way of showing the force and showing you know that strength. Otto just interjected the system. You know, of course, the dad's like, you know, let's send her out to see if we can find us, you know, a new person to take over the place of Damon who was in charge. But needless to say, you know, she goes to do that. You know, you can see how, you know, awkward, like brush me off. And then you see how she's out there and she's making the decision. And of course, Otto finds his way out there. I was just like, but if you don't just take your tail back in that room, because you want to be an instance of everything. And when he, she, pretty much said it she's like i want my father to deal with somebody who has a previous you know experience in, in combat do you not want somebody who's that close to my father's king to be protected and he's like yes we do. okay well i picked sir christian like back off <laughs> so you can tell he doesn't care for her she definitely doesn't care for him she kind of i think she sees him for what he really is you know a lot of them don't the king clearly can't see that i don't know if he's blinded by her or what needless to say as you know storyline progress you know you've seen the scene where eventually he gets close to allison whatever and all that you know confiding and making a comment talking about don't tell my daughter about these you know these our talks right there so when you see you know other scenes of the fact of damon taking one of the eggs and them showing up you know at dragstone and them trying to get it back him calling the girl all types of whores this is this, this and i'm sitting there thinking you trying to hoard your own daughter but that's a whole nother conversation i have all by itself in one video needless to say i like how renera shows up and she handles it she handles that so it's no bloodshed she gets it and she tells me either you're gonna kill me you know or you give me the egg you know so we can be done with this and he gives it back you know shruggingly you know and in the end she you know puts it in this little thing turns i love how she turned and looked at him he so deserved that i was just like yeah i know you wanted to show off or show but whatever you were trying to do but no need got what we needed and now we can go on but i will say seeing also the scene with princess uh renis and uh renera discussing yeah you might you know be considered the new you know the new heir in, in waiting but if your father remarries and has a son they're going to jump at the cause of him the son being the next king she's like i'm gonna change the orders like and then she says if that could only be you know and her you know back and forth the little gripes about you know they bent the knee to me i was like oh why you were still the next day you know serving them drinks in their cups still in some ways know your place it's not like she's trying to be hurtful she's trying to make you see you only want to see what you want to see but you know and she's gonna learn the hard way i feel like as the episodes go on but the scene that really did it for me was the fact that her father of course meets with her he was mad at her going to dragonstone they have a conversation over dinner he didn't think to tell her that he was making a decision of who he's going to marry and it was definitely not going to be anybody from uh the family of valerian you pick Allison, but anybody watching could clearly see that's probably where his going. But you know, you blindsided your daughter. No heads up, no nothing. She feels betrayed by you and definitely by her friend. And her friend staring, looking down. Look up. Own it. That's what you want. Even though I don't think deep down she wants it. It's more of what her daddy wants. She's just going along with it. But hey, 
pulling up that rank. And then the scene of um, Valerian and uh, Damon meeting and, you know, figuring out how they're going to deal with the craft feeder and all that. And this, this will kind of catapult and get the respect he deserves. And, you know, since a lot of people keep thinking, you know, he's just rebelling and doing these other little things. But I just really enjoy that conversation and them coming together. We're going to see how that turns out on this episode. So with that said, you guys, let's go ahead and jump into it. I'll say the rest of my thoughts at the end, you guys. For you! The sea snake will have your boxy fucking head! No, 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 please! Ah! Ah! He's the king's firstborn son. I don't know that his grace sees it so clearly. Then it lies with you to make him see it. Peter has dug in for siege on Bloodstone while his men sabotage our fleet under the cover of dark. Not today, Tyler. The matter of the Stepstones is regrettably urgent. It's been three years. It can wait another three days. Damon and the Sea Snake started their war without his grace's leave. Were he to intervene now, after so long, it would make the crown appear weak. Can Is it the king's command? Yes, but it... Then once, Your Grace. But it needn't be. None of it needs be this way in truth. Oh, girl, please. Are... Give it a rest. You have duties. As I am ceaselessly reminded. I am sorry? As I am ceaselessly reminded. You will need to be reminded, whoever attended. No one's here for me. Is it war, princess? Though your father refuses to admit it, we've been dragged into it by your uncle and the sea snake. Now have you served on the late Lady Red Wine, bait and cake? Why would you need a dragon cake? To house dragons, of course. I'd do anything for my queen. Or hmm? lady wife. Oh? Hmm. Thank you for the wine. Came of age. I've been slowly drowning in a lake of parchment, flung from every corner of the realm. Marriage proposals all. And I have tried often to discuss it with you. You must marry. What your grace has been a sighting of a white heart. The stag is the king of the king's wood, your grace, and regal portent for Prince Egon's name day. My name is heir to the Iron Throne, so that I might only further raise the standing of a Lord of Castle Rock. White Heart was a symbol of royalty in these lands. And on this day of all days. I've never been one for signs of importance, Your Grace, but if the gods did wish to show their favor... Your Grace. I had this forged in the Golden Gallery in honor of Prince Egon. It's quite a thing. I hope it might provide the killing stroke against your white heart. Renera may take her place there by my side without shame and feel herself well compensated for her loss in station. What loss of station? If you were to name young Egon heir, your grace. I, 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 I did not decide to name Renera my heir on a whim. All the lords of the kingdom would do well to remember that. Not only Rhaenyra's father, you're the king. 
She will do as you command. Oh, shut up, Otto. Just stop. It is not my wish to command her, Otto. I want her to be happy. Who do you have in mind? Prince Egon. I want to be suffocated by all this fucking politicking. Let us speak no more. Mm -hmm. To me, the best match for Rhaenyra is the son of the sea sick, Selenor. Some years ago, I counseled you to take his sister to wife. My reasoning remains the same. Lenor is of pure Valyrian descent. He shares blood with your cousin, the Princess Release. And he is the heir to the wealthiest house in the realm. Do you think the realm will ever accept me as their queen? Yeah. I have no choice but to, Princess. Would you, you help, help me raise a man to steal his own sister's birthright? It is Aegon that's being robbed. He's the firstborn son of Aegon will be king. He must guide Viserys towards reason. Oh god, there it is. This is a plea for aid. Then why not send it? Because it is a war started by two malcontents. Unhappy with decisions I made. Yeah, because you weren't making the right one. Is it better for the realm if the crab feeder thrives? Or is vanquished? Mm -hmm. Why must every effort on your behalf be resisted? As if to the death. Because you mean to replace me with Alison Hightower's son. The boy you always wanted. You haven't judged me, Rhaenyra. Oh, no. It isn't Alison, is it? You, you said it yourself. The lords of the realm gather like vultures to a carcass, hoping to feast on my bones. What would you have me do? If it was for advantage, you would have been a Valarian. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You must marry. Strengthen your own claim. Show up your succession. Multiply. I sweat now. On your, on your mother's memory, you, you will not be disappointed. I've made, made call for Driftmont to send more ships, and they will be weeks away. Hunters hold the high positions, foot soldiers hold the ground. If we strike them on dragon back again and again, but they just retreat within the caves. Damon. Damon is why we are losing. He at least is fighting this war. What role have you played in this council, Uncle? Hell of the master of complaints. Enough! They Blood or no friend, I will not have you stop mutiny.
know that it is not my desire to see you fail in your course. It is instead my hope that this aid will deliver the victory that has thus far evaded us. enjoyed this episode definitely a lot going on with the opening scene being uh the the battle with the uh, crab feeder his men of course damon uh with lord valerian a lot going on of course you see him like trying to weed him out because as soon as things get a little hot hence the dragon they all hide in a little hole I like how, you know, Damon, he's just kind of, he's he's flexing. He's trying his best, and it seems like it's a lot going on. And, of course, with no help from Viserys, you know, it's been, I don't know how long, off and on, this war has kind of been going on and on and on with no help from his side. You see that time has passed. Allison already has a son, Queen Allison, <laughs> with uh, the king. And definitely a strain with his daughter, Rhaenyra. I'm not surprised by that. It's like you see the ultimate betrayal of father and friend. <laughs> She's kind of doing her own thing. He's, you know, uh, he's, you know, mingling with the people and all. He's like, where's my daughter? I'm like, oh, all of a sudden now you notice that she's not around. She doesn't want to be around either one of you. Doesn't want to be around anybody else. None of them, honestly. She'd rather be in her little spot reading whatever just to could probably contain her little bit of sanity dealing with all the changes that have happened in her life in such a short period of time. Losing a mother, brother, now all of a sudden getting a new uh, <laughs> queen mother and then him, daddy, you know, kind of trying to... But now you see he's trying to add a little extra layer to the situation where he wants her to be married off. And you see him seeing one of the Lannisters, they, was, they said John Lannister, eyeing her. And then he comes out to talk to her and bring her some wine. She's kind of catches on to his, you know, drift. And she's like, you want to go out and do this? Like, you need to be married. This is just forcing her. I understand that is the way things are going. But you would like your daughter to be happy. Not being a loveless marriage with someone she really does not want to be with. So, of course, somewhat of a push pullback where let her make a decision. Let her find the person, court, whatever, however it, it needs to happen. But... Forcing on your daughter, knowing she really had no desire since the first episode. She says she doesn't want to get married. She just wants to do what she wants to do, be with her dear friend and eat cake, <laughs> if you recall. So definitely some tension there. Eventually she leaves off because, of course, her father has press, dealing with some other pressing matters, you know, by the hand. But you see the scene with the hand talking to somebody else saying now that he has his firstborn son and saying how, of course, make a little hints of the situation of knowing she is, 
you know, next in line, the way he set up, he's like, what you need to do as being the hand, make it so that he chooses him. Remember what uh, Rena said, you know, once he has a son, you know, some people are going to flock to him to see if he makes that change and make his son the next heir. Now, granted, you see scenes throughout this episode where the series makes comments to his queen about seeing these visions, you know, of having a son. He kept seeing it over and over again. He kept wondering if he's doubtful because you could tell throughout this episode he's feeling a certain way people coming at him all this this and that and other his stream with his daughter you know all the politicking as he put it drinking just drinking drink, trying to drink his sorrows away but it's like you, there's no way you can do that you are the king you have decisions to make some decisions you probably don't want to make some things you probably made that some people feel like you know you shouldn't have that comes you know with the territory i don't honestly i didn't feel sorry for him like you know some of the things you could have made decisions like, you know, with uh, Valerian that you didn't want to make. And of course, throw out the, you know, flex So I'm the king. Yeah, we're aware. Still not making good decisions. And in the instance of him feeling this type of way, and then, you know, of course, the hand had to back off because it was like he doesn't feel like dealing with it. And you can see the queen kind of looking on. Now, with that being said, you can see the part where Rhaenyra kind of runs off and Sir Chris, and I'm so glad he followed her so she's not alone because God forbid, like he says, if anything's happened to her, you know, you putting yourself, you know, at risk and also putting the family because then, you know, anything could happen. And she needed that. You can just tell she needed to get away, of course, you know, being upset and talking to him about a father trying to, you know, find her a maid of somebody so she can marry off whatever. And she's just not really interested. Her focus is really not that. And just having that talk with him and asking him how he feels, you know, do you think I can, you know, will be a good, you know, queen if I am? And he he says I, I can you know imagine it so but at first I wasn't sure if he was gonna say something because he was the pause there <laughs> so that's very interesting also seeing in regards to that whole situation with her being uh, heir you see of course Hightower coming in talking to his daughter and she's like you know the it's gonna be Renera it's like no you need to make it so you need to talk to him whatever and all that of course you know I just that guy, he has an agenda, this and that other, especially when he's giving out advice to um, the king about some other choices for us, you know, so you're the king, you need to make it, like, worry about your own daughter, that's why you already did, you were pushing her and pushing her to get with him, whatever, and all. I finally got with him, now you're pushing her, pushing her to help him make your grandson or her, their son the next heir. It's like, she did, did all this, you see, but still is having to deal with her father. I wonder how long it's going to be till she probably cracks and says something to him, like, you know, just stop asking me to do stuff. Like, I've done enough to, to I would hope to please you enough, whatever, putting myself in a situation all that because you wanted to sell whatever, because the position and title he has is of nothing. And he wants to be as close to that daggone king as he can possibly be. Let me go through and use my daughter while you hoard her out. As much as you want to talk about Damon's whore. You know, I just truly cannot stand that man. You just know everything's a damn agenda with him. And he doesn't care if he has used his daughter to get it. So, and I think deep down she knows it. And it's going to rub off as time goes on over and all that. Just, oh my goodness. It's going to slowly change her more and more and more. She's still young, but as time goes on and they age these characters, you're going to see it. Uh, also, I will say, just seeing uh, that total discussion with uh, Renera, with her father, and her just venting how she feels the frustrations of him and doing what he's doing and how he wants to be, he kind of realizes that, you know, you need to pull back. Like, she doesn't think you really care. You got your son now. Like, you know, if you want to change, you know, what you wanted to do, but then you see how he says, you know, on his her mother's, you know, spirit and just everything about her, you know. I want you to know, you know, I love you and this is how things are going to be. I, you know, I wavered for a brief moment, but now, you know, now he sees his clarity after drinking, drinking, waking up with a hangover or whatever. But knowing that his wife was right there, the queen, you know, reading that note, somebody saying in regards to assistance, you know, for Valerian and Damon and him finally sending some ships. It's like, it took you this long? Because I'm like, really? And then you see eventually... Uh, the crab feeder and his men, of course, keep, you know, scouring back in the little hole, staying at a far distance. And he comes back after being on the dragon. And you see um, Valerian's, I don't know if he's his brother, the uncle, whatever, having his choice words about Damon. This is this. But here, and I'm glad, I think uh, uh, Corliss' son says something like, what are you doing? And I'm like, yeah, what are you doing? You up here. Well, he's out there trying to deal with some of those other men. 
you know, that fall with crap or just kind of minimize as much of the threat. Granted, they're losing some ships. They have more ships coming. It's going to take, they said, what is it, days or weeks? You know, so, and then they finally get um, the message from Viserys. And you can see he did, probably didn't like it. I don't know if he's not sending him enough. Because I think he said, was it, I don't know if it was 10 ships or something. And how many men, 2,000 something men, I think I'm getting the number correct. And you could tell after he, you know, read that he just didn't like it. So he just kind of took his frustration out on, on you know, the guy. But in the end, he came up with a plan. You see what he did at first. He was it looked like he was getting up, waving a white flag and all that, having thinking the guy, of course, the craft were looking up, seeing if the dragons would come with it and all that. But that was a good way to do it. Get close enough, and Damon went charging, going through you know, sees amount of guys and, and cutting necks and just. I mean, I was here for it. Sometimes, like I said, Damon can irk my nerves and all, but at least you know what you're getting with him. And when it comes down to it, when he needs to step to the plate, he's going to do what he needs to do. And he's a good fighter for what we've seen since the first episode. So seeing that situation, he set up to kind of lure them out a little bit. And then you see how Valerian's, you know, guys came out. And then the fart with the dragon. Because I was like, who is on the dragon? At first I had said, I think I said Renera. I was like, is that Renera? I said, is that her dragon? I said, no, that looks like another dragon. I'm like, okay. And then it looks like it's um, Corliss Valerian's son on the dragon. Because at first I couldn't recognize who it was because they have, you know, their uh, helmet on. I'm like, okay. And it really was. <laughs> Just riding that dragon like nobody's business. Because it sure as hell one Damon. Damon was on the ground getting close enough to the crab feeder to get up in it. I really will say this. I really wished... We could have saw a little bit of that fight. I hate that we get to see that he fall, saw him go back into the hole, falling him in there, came out, dragged him, but he cut him in half, just dragging that little body. You see how Corliss saw, you know, Damon all bloodied up, like they literally went to town, or it just might have been from him, you know, cutting him up the splatter, but, you know, that was a good little epic scene. That fight sequence with Damon letting them get close to him and then charging them and just killing as he was trying to get as close as he could, I really like that. That was a good, you know, just overall, you know, fight sequence all in all together. Really, really good. And I love seeing Corliss do his thing, you know, with his uh, army of guys, the uncle, and then, like I said, his son up in the air, you know, mounting, you know, getting the ones higher up who are shooting down. So this was a really good episode. I'm really looking forward to the next one. And um, yeah, so with that said, you guys, comment below. Let me know what you think. And with that said, I'll see you guys in the next reaction. You guys take care.